Hi there, from Custom Home Builder Solutions Software, also known as CHS, a job costing, full accounting, and profit management software for the professional home builder. Um, this will be a video about um, posting accounts receivable if you need to um, basically post them as if you were on a cash basis and not recognize income right when you post the receivables invoice or maybe you might want to use it for um, the fact that you collect sales tax for some reason and you're not really wanting to have that show up in a sales tax payable account until you actually receive the deposit. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. But CHS has some tools that if you um, don't want to recognize, say you posted something for rental income but you don't really want to recognize it until you actually receive the deposit, Normally, when you're on a crude basis, accrual basis of accounting, you post receivables invoice and you select a GL number like maybe rental income or something like that. It's recognized on your income statement right away even though you haven't really collected the money yet. And that's a very normal way of doing things and is generally the way people do do things. But just in case you don't want that to happen, CHS has some features for recognizing those revenues only at the time that you receive the money instead of at the time that you post the receivables invoice. The first thing I want to talk about is on your company master when you're setting up your company, there's a place over here that says recognize revenues when AR is posted and it, the default for it is that it is checkmarked. And that's because most people are recognizing revenues on, a, on an accrual basis when they post their accounts receivable invoices. Uh, please discuss this with your accountant to make absolutely sure if you decide you want to uncheck this. Because watch what happens when I uncheck it. It says, please use the question mark help icon for this and read the help carefully. Be very sure that you want to make a change to recognizing accounts receivable revenues before saving this record. So I'll click OK. So I'll read about it by using the question mark button. It says discuss it with your accountant, like I said, um, unless you are sure that accounts receivable revenues should be posted on a cash basis, leave this field checked. It can be confusing to non-accountants if this box is unchecked because they will have to deal with unrecognized receivable revenues which we will be talking about in this video. It is our recommendation generally that the box remains checked. And then there's some further uh, explanation about this that it has to do with what we'll be showing in this video. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave it unchecked and I'm going to save my company master and I'm going to close that. Now there's one more thing you should be aware of. I'm going to open the chart of accounts because we need to talk about um, how you let CHS know um, which GL account to hold the other side of an accounts receivable entry. So when you post an accounts receivable entry, and let's say you select something like rental income, CHS is actually, um, because we unchecked that box, it's actually going to post it to whatever account that you set up in your control accounts. I click the set control accounts button up here. You select an account for unrecognized receivables revenues. And we selected an account that we have set up uh, right in the same area in under receivables that we called unrecognized revenue in receivables. Now if you load the recommended NAHB chart of accounts, etc. This account will be in there and it will be marked as a control account, but maybe you have someplace else you'd like CHS to post these entries until you receive the deposit. And I'll show you how CHS will hold on to the uh, GL number that you want when you select uh, to pay it. You know, like the GL number like rental revenues that you select. But you do need to make sure that you have a GL number selected for unrecognized receivables revenue. So I wanted to point that out. There is a question mark about it that's doing some explaining again about that and what it's for. So I'll close that uh, and I'm going to just leave this chart of accounts open for right now. So we set up for um, 
not recognizing things until we actually post the deposit. In general, a whole lot of custom home builders don't hardly use accounts receivable. They're doing draw requests to receive money for the homes they're building and just posting the deposit when they receive the money so they're not even dealing uh, with something like I'm uh, going to talk about right now. But since we're set up for recognizing revenues later, let me show you what happens when we add a new receivables invoice. We've already had videos about how to add invoices. And I'm going to select our payer called Subin, who actually is somebody that wanted some remodeling work done. And we've decided we'll be billing them um, somehow as we go using accounts receivable rather than job cost billing or anything. Job cost billing, I believe, will also that gets posted to accounts receivable, uh, which is not really the draw request that we have. It's just a, a way to pull in all the costs on a job, like maybe remodeling and bill. And it will also react to the fact that you uh, have unchecked that box and that you want to recognize revenues later. CHS is assigned the next invoice number up, and because we attached um, this payor Sam Subin to the job that we call Subin, the job and the department related to that job have dropped in for us. So we'll create our new AR invoice and we'll just let it go ahead and have today's date. And we are going to watch this GL later um, field. We are going to select uh, 3200 on our chart of accounts which is sales remodeling for this remodeling invoice. Notice that I got a pop-up. Since your company master is set to not recognize revenues or sales taxes until payment is posted, the program will submit this record using the control account for recognizing receivables later. It will hold the GL account you just selected in the GL later field to use when posting the payment on the deposit window. So it, it detects that and tells you about it. Um, I think I started typing too slowly and didn't really get my account selected there, but now I did. So I'm just going to put Subin, I don't know, I'm making up stuff based on what I have in my help document about this. You could also type any notes, of course, for the invoice that you want. Let's just make that easy, that the amount is 4500 So you can see how it's got a little dimmed field that I can't type in where it's saying GL later. And it has an alert also up here about how we have that box unchecked. This means that when you select it, it'll be put in the GL and the control account for holding revenues will be used when it's posted. Um, this can also be handy if you're doing a lot of sales tax collecting, um, that you did uncheck that box so that sales tax payable that you might select here when you're making a sale, you know, maybe you add a line and you add a sales tax line and you're using a sales tax payable account number here, it would hold it for later for when you post the deposit. So, but let's just submit this AR invoice. And it says it's been posted, etc. Now let's go look at our database to see what got posted for that. And let's just search for our Subin payor, just so we could look at that all by itself in the database. If you want to see how it all got posted, you can view the journal entry that CHS did behind the scenes, and you can see that it did its debit to 4500 to accounts receivable, so accounts receivable was increased. But it took and um, used your control account for unrecognized revenues and receivables and put a credit in there. So that means we haven't recognized that actually as revenue, as remodeling income revenue yet. And if you're an accountant and understand you know, some of that kind of thing, you look on your chart of accounts and let's um, refresh it because we made an entry that affects one of the balances. You can see there's a credit balance that's sort of offsetting the accounts receivable trade right now in a way. Um, and if you drill down to it, you can see what that is, 40, minus 4,500, uh, well, it's just a credit. In other words, to an accountant, that means we haven't recognized this revenue yet on our income statements. So now let's play like we got a payment for that 4500 So we're uh, posting a new deposit. Let's add a new deposit here. And I'm going to show you what happens to you when you're um, 
got that box unchecked again. So let's select our payer, Subin. Let's say he gave us, I don't know, check number 6789. And the job dropped in because we've selected this payer and attached it to that job in the department related to the job dropped in. So let's look and see if there's any invoices, and there are, for 4500 under Accounts Receivable Invoice. And it noticed that we are um, holding things, and it tells us that this means you will need to click the link to use AR Entry and select the entry to use for this line. So that's this link right here. It didn't just apply the 4500 yet. Um, you can use the AR entry selection, and what it does is show all entries that you made behind the invoice. We only made one line entry, but maybe we made a second line for that sales tax I was talking about, so both lines would show up. And it needs to do one line at a time because it's holding an amount over here on that entry. I mean, a GL account number, it's holding that it needs to supply to this record so CHS knows where to post this recognized revenue now. But I'm going to select that one line. Like I said, there could be two or three lines. And you would need to do those one at a time, keep adding a line using the Add button if you had more than one entry. Um, this is just the entry number, so CHS knows what entry number to go look at in Accounts Receivable. It's just a, an entry number. Um, but it's also saying it's going to go look at that, and it's found that there was this GL number we were holding. If you hover over it, it explains it. A GL number we were holding to go ahead and recognize the revenue. So on here, we can do Subin payment for remodeling cabinets. And we might select a deposit category. Watch other videos about deposit category. Um, and even though I had a default account attached to sales price, of 2010 for sales. It did not drop in because the GL number actually dropping in is the accounts receivable GL number because we selected an accounts receivable invoice here. But CHS knows it's going to make a couple more entries just because it has this GL account we held for later right here. So let's just um, select our bank account um, 1025 maybe for our construction checking. And let's just select today. And let's submit this deposit. It's, it did get submitted. And to view the posted entries, I can click this button to see what it did post up here. And what you will see is just the entry to accounts receivable. It's just showing the basic entries that it made for the deposit. But what I'd like to show you is if we go to the deposits um, cash side, that um, deposit should be right at the top because we just posted it. There's also a link here to see the full JE, that the journal entry basically that CHS posted. Notice that it increased our cash by 4,500 because we selected that checking account. It reduced accounts receivable by posting a credit to accounts receivable trade right here. You can see that. Then it recognized that we needed to take some money out of, and by taking out of this account, that means we debited it because the credit was originally posted. Take it out of unrecognized revenue and receivable. CHS knew to do that because we have that box unchecked, or that there was a GL account to recognize later there, which was 3200 and it has now posted its credit to 3200 and sales Sales types of accounts, which is what that is, sales remodeling, their normal balances are credit balances with the minus sign in front of them, which always seems backwards to non-accountants. But that's the correct way to recognize sales on your income statement. So you can see how that entry was posted um, in the help um, here. I will post um, those sample reports so you can see how those sample GIA, well, I think you should just use, um, if you click Help, and you do Accounts Receivable, and you do the Help Document, and you open the Help Document, and you go way to the last several pages of your document, you'll see that there's a section here all about this unrecognized receivables that I'm talking about. 
and that the last page actually shows the same um, journal entries and shows how those were done by CHS in the background. So I'm going to close that, close that, close that, and then I'm going to go back to my chart of accounts. I'm going to refresh it real quickly here. And you can see that um, our unrecognized revenue is re in receivables are now zero. If you, if you click the magnifying glass there, you can see how an entry went in from the accounts receivable, which was a credit from the accounts receivable when we created the invoice. And then it was debited for this much um, when we posted the deposit and it got cleared out. And our money really now is in sales remodeling down here um, on our income statement accounts. Um, sales remodeling, you'll see there's a credit in there for $4,500. But it didn't happen until we actually received the money, not when we posted the accounts receivable invoice. Um, hopefully that um, helps you understand how CHS will help you a bit. Try to get your accounts receivable on a cash basis if that's necessary. Once again, I completely emphasize that you need to discuss this show your accountant the help document and this video to discuss whether you would want to be doing something like that. And thank you for watching. I hope that helps.